Welcome to ASVAB Math Review Part 6. We're going to look at some geometry concepts. So the first thing we're going to talk about is solving volume and surface area in three-dimensional figures. A cube has a volume of 125 cubic feet. What is the surface area of the cube? So the first thing we're going to do is solve the first part of the problem. The general formula for volume is length times width times height, but because it is a cube, the length, width, and height are all the same. Therefore, the formula for the volume of a cube is equal to the side cubed. Now they give us the volume and they tell us it's 125 cubic feet. So we're going to substitute the volume for 125, and it's equal to the side cubed. I need to find out what one side is, so I'm going to find the cube root of the side. Therefore, I also must find the cube root of 125, because to keep an equation balanced, we need to do both sides. So this will get rid of the cube, so I'm just left with one side. And the cube root of 125 is 5, because 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. So now that I know that one side is 5, I want to find the surface area of the cube. So general formula for the surface area of a prism is... 2 times the length times width plus 2 times the width times height plus 2 times the height times length. Now we know that, as we just discussed, cubes, each side is exactly the same. And we have 2, 4, 6 sides, so the surface area for a cube is equal to 6 times the side squared. Now I know one side is 5, so I'm going to use substitution and put 6 times 5 squared. And then 5 squared is 25. And the surface area for the cube is going to be equal to 6 times 25, which would be 150. And because we're finding area, it's going to be square feet. So the next problem we're looking at is circumference. Circumference is always on the test. So the circumference is the perimeter of a circle. We go the radius is from the center of the circle to the outside. In this case, it's 20 inches. What is the circumference of the circle to the nearest whole number? They may also say most nearly. All we're doing is rounding. So the formula for circumference is equal to 2 times pi times r, where pi is equal to 3 and 14 hundredths. So I have 2 times 3 and 14 hundredths times 20. You can multiply these in any way that you want. It doesn't matter order. I'm just going to start with 2 times pi. So I'd have 6 and 28 hundredths times 20. I'm going to just bring my 0 down. 2 times 8 is 16 carry that 1. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. And 2 times 6 is 12. So I have, I have 12,560. However, I have to look at the number of after the decimal. So I have two numbers after. Therefore, I have to go two places to the left. And that's where my decimal is going to be. So my answer is going to be 125 and 6 tenths. 
So now I want to round this to the nearest whole number. So I'm going to look at my 6 because that's in the tenths place. If it's 0 to 4, it would stay 125. If it's 5 to 9, it's going to round up to 126. Since my number is 6, I'm going to round this to 126, and it's just going to be 126 inches. The next problem is finding the degrees of an angle of two parallel lines. So if two lines are parallel, they form a straight angle. This is equal to 180 degrees. So this angle is 180 degrees. Sometimes the statement will also include is cut by a transversal. And so the transversal is the line right here. Given the information, you can solve the following problem. Line A and B are parallel. If angle 4, so if this angle right here is 100 degrees, what is angle 1? So the whole angle is 180, and we're just going to subtract 100 degrees from it. So this angle would be 80 degrees. Now, the other thing they may ask is if angle 1 is 80 degrees, what is angle 5? Well, angle 1 and angle 5 are corresponding angles, and corresponding angles are congruent or equal, so this would also be 80 degrees. The other rule for two or parallel lines is that the vertical angles are congruent, so angle 3 and angle 7 are going to be 80, 80 degrees. And we can also say that angle 2 and angle 4 are congruent because they're vertical. So that would be 100 degrees. Angle 8 and angle 4 are congruent because they're corresponding. So that's 100 degrees. And angle 8 and angle 6 are vertical angles. So if you know this information, you can solve the problem because that's just knowing this chart will help you figure out the answer to this problem. Supplementary angles are two angles when added together equal 180 degrees. Linear pairs also equal 180 degrees. So for example, if I have angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary as well as linear pairs, if angle A is 2x plus 30 and angle 2 is 3x minus 50, what does angle 2 equal? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add those two together. So 2x plus 30 plus 3x minus 50. And then we're going to set them equal to 180 degrees because they are supplementary. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my like terms. So I have 5x and then I have 30 minus 50 since the minus is greater. I'm going to have minus 20 equals 100. 80 degrees. So I'm going to do, get the x isolated. So I'm going to add 20 to both sides. So I have 5x is equal to 200. And then I want to get the x by itself. I'm going to divide both sides by 5. So that just leaves x over here, and 5 goes into 200. Well, 5 goes into 24 times, and then bring my 0 down. So x equals 40. Now, that's what x equals, but that's not what angle 2 equals. So angle 2 is equal to 3 times 40 
minus 50. So 3 times 40 is 120. Minus 50 is going to be equal to 70. So my answer for angle 2 is 70 degrees. Complementary angles are two angles that when added together equal 90 degrees. So how many degrees are in angle B? So just like the last problem, we would have angle A plus angle B is equal to 90 degrees. So angle A is 36 degrees plus angle B, which is 2x equals 90 degrees. So I'm going to get the, isolate the x. I'm going to subtract 36 from both sides. That's going to cancel. So I have 2x is equal, I'm going to borrow. So 10 minus 6 is 4, 8 minus 3 is 5. So 2x equals 54. We're going to divide both sides by 2. That cancels. I'm left with just x. 2 goes into 5 2 times. I'd have 1 left over. 14 divided by 2 is 7. So x equals 27. But angle B, remember, is equal to 2 times x or 2 times 27. So angle B is going to be equal to 54. And if I add the angle B to angle A, I'd get 90 degrees. Now we're going to look at Pythagorean's theorem. So we're solving for the unknown side of a right triangle. So A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared and A and B are the legs and C is the hypotenuse. So I have A, B, and C. So we're going to solve for X. So we're going to have 3 squared plus 4 squared equals C squared. So I have 9 plus 4 squared is 16 equals C squared. 25 is equal to C squared. I want to find the square root of both sides because I want to know what the X is equal to. And C is equal to 5. So X is equal to 5. Next, we're going to look at the sum of the angles of a polygon. So the formula for the sum is 180 degrees times n minus 2, where n is the number of sides of the polygon. So what is the sum of the angles of an octagon? An octagon has eight sides. So using our formula, we're going to do 180 degrees times 8 minus 2, and that's going to equal our, equal the sum. So I would just have 180 degrees times 6, 6 times 8 is 48, 6 times 1 is 6 plus 4, so I'd have 1,080 degrees is the sum of the angles of the polygon.